Good morning, boys and girls. It is me, your humble neighborhood friendly stroke assaulter. So let's go through another letter of the alphabet. Today we're going to do Q is for quiet time. Yes, that is right. Q is for quiet time. So what do I mean by that? Um, then again, I'm no exemplar of this. Um, so once you've had your stroke, you might be a complete dunderhead like I was, and, and you want to try to immediately do things. Probably not the best idea. And there are times where you're going to need to put your head down, you're going to need quiet. Uh, so, for example, my head is really uh, not making my world an easy place to live in because of post-stroke headache. Uh could be caused by many things. It could be actually caused by post-stroke fatigue. It could be caused by me being overstimulated. <clears throat> it could be caused by anxiety. It could be caused by, you know, there's so many reasons why it you could get a headache or you might become overstimulated. You're going to need to lie down, okay, uh, sit down. Now, for me, uh, I found dark room, fan on, uh, sleep right sometimes works uh, same dark room uh, I'll put a the, the, the radio on right something for just a little bit of noise in the background uh, and I'm boring I listen to CBC radio right so <clears throat> it's not music um, so and it's going to look very unproductive. There is another problem with the quiet time, and we'll get to that later. So there are times where you are going to need to go lie down. Uh, because the fact you need to go lie down, right, uh, it kind of lends itself into you is for uncertainty. And... <clears throat> You may need to lie down for 20 minutes. You may need to lie down for two hours. You may end up taking a nap, right? Uh, I kind of had a day like that the, earlier in the week, whereby I <clears throat> had plans, and I was successful for part of my day, and then I got a headache, and it was really bad, and I really needed to go lay down. And that really need to go lay down, turn into three and a half hour nap. Like actual fell asleep, you know, nap. And that's the thing you're going to have to learn to accept with your, with your stroke, right? Uh, with, with your stroke or with a brain injury. You are going to have to, and this is a difficult thing to learn, and I'm still trying to get my head around it. Because as a human being, uh, we goal set, right? Today I'm going to accomplish this, 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 and that. And if I get to it, I'll do this, right? So you might start out your day with six things on your plate, on your to-do list. You may or may not get past item number one or two. Um, I'm going to say during the initial phases of your recovery, you'll be lucky to get past three. Right? And that's just a thing. Right? Uh, and, and that's not me trying to be facetious or condescending. That's just the reality of the situation. Right? You may not get past item number three. Right? And that's just the way it's going to be. Um, and that's simply... Like, I overestimated my, overestimated my ability... To be able to just work through this. Uh, yeah, no. It, that doesn't work that way. Right? You are going to need to take a realistic inventory of what you're able to accomplish. And then accept the fact that it's going to be monitored by factors in, that are outside your control or influence. <laughs> How noisy was the store? How much ambient light was there? How fatiguing was it just to go get the cart to walk down six aisles to get four things, right? <clears throat> you know, um, 
how difficult was it to get dressed? <coughs> Things like that. <clears throat> Did you happen to encounter an asshole in your world? Let's now set your brain into overdrive. Um, I'm also going to suggest the days when you have multiple professional appointments. <clears throat> like, I have physio and counseling that day. I'm going to suggest you don't schedule anything that day. Except for the possibility of Netflix and chill with yourself. I don't mean that kind of chill. I mean literally Netflix and turn the lights out and consider napping. So you're going to have to reconsider how busy your days look. <clears throat> and then you may be able to avoid the quiet time. Because there are going to be periods of time where you are going to accomplish nothing but the examination of the inside of your eyelids. Because that's what your brain is telling your body to do. Right? I'm sorry, you had plans. You know, something happened. Whatever that may be. And you need to go lie down now. And that's a thing. It's a shitty thing, right? <clears throat> it's not a fun thing. Right now, will, as you progress from week one into week two, week two into a month, into your next month, and so on, those events of quiet time should lessen. Now, that's a couple of reasons why. One, the brain is repairing itself, so you're able to sort of work through this a little bit more easily, more readily. Two, <clears throat> um, the first first week or two after the stroke, you, you're just fatigued. You, you are just physically spent, and, and there's many reasons for that. Uh, you know, one, you've had a stroke. Two, your brain is repairing itself. Three, <clears throat> you're a whirlwind of emotions and physical ability and inability, right? And could ability and, you know, hopes and aspirations and, and anxiety and frustration. So just waking up in the morning can be overwhelming. So you're going to need a lot more quiet time in the first two to three weeks. Um, and then you may determine that certain things uh, will require a period of quiet time after it. So that's not going to be part of your scheduling. Like, I know when I go to this appointment, when I get done, I'm going to need some quiet time. <clears throat> Which may just be a nap. Right? Maybe like, you know what, I'm just going to put my head down for half an hour, right? take a quick little snooze, and I'll be good. And there might be times where you will definitively need to be in a dark room for hours, Sleep or not is irrelevant. You just need to control the amount of stimulation uh, and sensory overload you are not getting. Right? You just need to put yourself in a dark room with, you know, me. I'm not big on the white noise, like the whale song and all that, you know, funness. It's not my not my bag. For people, it might be. For me, it's not. I will either put on CBC Radio or start a three-hour documentary on YouTube. Right. Um, <clears throat> Lately, I've been listening to the ridiculous conspiracy videos on YouTube, and I found that most conspiracy videos break down to things due to reasons, due to you're not supposed to know, due to things, due to reasons, you know, be, because of things. <laughs> Obscure things. So, quiet time... I know it's going to seem very unproductive, because unfortunately it is, and I realize that being unproductive <clears throat> is demoralizing. Uh, I realize that being that level of unproductive is a kick in the nuts. Right? I mean, like I had so many things I wanted to do today. Yep, you did. You completely did. However. Your brain has taken control and basically said, no, I need this, right? So, and unfortunately, you got to listen to the brain. 
Well, one, it tried to kill you, so it might do it again, right? Um, because uh, you'll have a blood clot in your brain, you'll be like, say hello to my little friend, the blood clot, right? And it's gonna, you're dead, right? Um, yeah, bad Tony Montana. Yeah, I know, I get it. Um, sorry, no M16 with 203. I'll have one available for the next time. Um, <clears throat> so, quiet time. Get to say it is as easy as I can. It's a necessary evil, right? It's something that is now part of your new normal, right? Be it you just need to lay down, uh, be it you need a dark room, be it you need a nap, be it a combination of all three. And then you're going to have to learn to accept that you do not have the same level of productivity. forgive physical limitations, right? Like, can't bend over, can't walk right. I don't have the use of a limb. I don't have the use of a side of my body. Um, you know, uh, you know that would now become even more difficult to make effective planning and to be productive at, you know, on a, on a regular schedule of work. <laughs> Quiet time now makes that more exponential. Like, just the exponential... Uh, you know, frustration factor is, is unnerving. <clears throat> because I had this earlier this week. I, you know, had, forget what day it was, but I know I came home and it's like, I need a nap. And I had planned to do things that day. And I kind of took a three and a half hour nap, right? And all of a sudden, you know, what I had thought I was going to be able to accomplish in a day turned into not likely, right? Not going to happen. So, now this, the quiet time, may impact some of your relationships. <laughs> or will impact some of your relationships. One, you're going to make plans with friends and you're going to have to blow those plans off. I've had to do that. It's like, no, guys, I'm not going to make it. Um, I was supposed to go out and play Airsoft <clears throat> last weekend. And I just couldn't do it. Uh, I ended up not feeling very well. Um, I ended up in the hospital and emerged due to a headache, uh, later on Sunday, but I didn't get a lot of sleep and I had to, you know, basically unschedule myself. Uh, now that I was able to basically let the guys know about five in the morning that I'm not wait, I'm not going to be able to make it for the game today. So, you know, I gave them four or five hours notice. There are going to be other times when you were in the middle of an activity. And like, I'm done. I need to go home now. I need to put my head down. Like, the, I, I'm, I'm, which is going to be perturbing. <clears throat> right? It's going to be frustrating. Um, I've been there in a grocery store. It's like, I can't finish this. Let's just go ahead and check out and take me home. Right? <clears throat> and that is completely frustrating. Because now, have you not only made the plans to do the thing... The grocery shop, go to the park, whatever. You've had to cut them short. In the case of shopping, you may need to come and revisit that. Right? So, for those around of you supporting the stroke assaulters, um, please, I understand you're going to want to get frustrated that, you know, why are they going home to take a nap? That's because cues for quiet time. There are going to be periods of time where they're going to need to be quiet, right? or in a quiet environment. You are going to need to take a nap, take a rest. Uh, now, I appreciate not everyone's had a migraine. Um, for some people, they they also report getting migraines and whatnot. So there may be other headache-related conditions uh, to the stroke. So that is a possibility. But basically, <clears throat> just be aware if you have had a stroke, um, there may be periods of time where you need quiet time. Lights out, in bed, on the couch, in a comfy chair, you know, no noise, limited light, minimal stimulation, you know, try not to get overwhelmed. Or it could be, I'm going to lie down, I'm going to put on a movie, I just need it for the noise, right? You're going to put on your granola-eating, tree-hugging, Birkenstock-equipped hippie music, like whale song, 
you know. It's, it's a thing. It's completely a thing. And, and there's nothing you can do with it, and there's nothing wrong with it, right? Uh, it's one of those things of your new normal that, for me, uh, quiet time took a bit of internal acceptance to get over, right? I had to accept the fact that you are not going to accomplish what you intended to do today. You are not going to try to accomplish what you intended to do today. What you wanted to accomplish to do today is no longer relevant, right? You're going to stop, and you're going to go to ground. You're going to go find your bed, you're going to put yourself in it, and you're going to stay there until your brain tells your body we are good to go, and you can get up and carry on. Now, does that mean you could spend a day in bed? Yes. Does that mean you might have to spend like a full 24 hours in bed, except for, you know, maybe food and bathroom breaks? Yes. I'm sorry, it's it's the new, part of the new normal. <clears throat> so anyways, at that point, if you happen to like what you've been watching, uh, it's rolling up on three months in about a week. Please like, share, subscribe with your friends. If you happen to know someone's currently going through the, the journey of their recovery and rehabilitation from a stroke, or someone that's supporting someone through their journey of rehabilitation from a stroke, please like, share, subscribe with them. Get them to know about the channel so they can maybe get some information that they may not be getting through other sources. If it's a topic you guys want to see me cover, please leave it in the comments down below, or you can reach me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassaulter, all one word, at gmail.com. Um, I have Twitter, haven't activated it yet. I'm uh, going to do that today more likely, if I remember. Remember, I had a stroke. Um, <clears throat> and if you either happen to see in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being facial droop, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, uh, stuttering, slurred speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Um, you then have uh, general body weakness, weakness on one side, or inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.